Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hearts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. Good morning, church. Welcome to our Baptism Sunday, where we are celebrating over 50 baptisms today. As you might have noticed, we kept the music portion of the service a little bit shorter so that we can get right into the idea of baptism. No, I will not be singing All I Want for Christmas is You. Everyone say, oh, man. I know, I know. You're going to have to come out to one of my shows to hear that, all right? The reason why we're doing our Baptism Sunday today is we are on the back end of our teen camp. And teen camp is our camp for 6th to 12th graders that is pretty much fueled by a little bit of sleep and a whole lot of caffeine here at the church. We did Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and it was a great encounter with the students, got to meet new friends, as well as an amazing encounter with God. On Thursday night, Ms. Shauna gave a great message, and she's our youth director. She gave a message about how students should stop settling for the little snacks of life, the little things that don't sustain or fulfill us because Jesus Christ is an entire meal. Watch this. At, go away, fly. Jesus. At the end of her message, nine teenagers gave their lives to Jesus Christ. On the second night of our camp, we had a moment of communion, and we had a total of 12 students receive or operate in their spiritual gifts for the very first time. And what was beautiful about that moment is the Spirit of God was working from student to student. Us leaders almost got to sit back and watch how Jesus Christ was doing an amazing work in each of their lives. On Saturday mo morning, we gave an opportunity for students to share their testimony or to share what God had done in their lives. And a few highlights I want to share. We had a total of two students who had previously attempted suicide prior to camp. One of the students said she woke up after another failed suicide attempt and that she realized that the reason that she's still breathing is that the purpose of her life is to glorify Jesus in all that she does. We had one student who on the second night of camp had shared that he really struggled with being afraid and he struggled with fear. Well, by Saturday morning, because he had received the gift of encouragement from the Holy Spirit, he got up in front of the whole camp and shared a little word of encouragement. And I saw kids' faces physically change as he was sharing this message of encouragement. There are many more stories, many more things that God did. But in summary, I'm going to say this today, that Jesus Christ is building his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So on the back end of all that Jesus was doing in their lives this weekend, we offer water baptism or this baptism Sunday to give students that gave their lives to Jesus or students that want to take their next step, that next step that they can do to proclaim their faith to those who are here with us today. So I'm going to do a quick little message on baptism, then we're going to go back into a time of singing, and then we'll get to witness the baptisms themselves. So the first thing that I want to highlight today is that water baptism is extremely special to the church. Baptism is one of two sacraments that Jesus Christ himself offers to the church along with communion. Say to me, Pastor Josh, what's a sacrament? I'm so glad you asked. A sacrament is just an action or a ritual that is done by the Christian church that is understood to be a visible sign of God's divine grace. So every single baptism that we get to witness today, we are visibly seeing God's grace. 
We are visibly seeing the miracle of salvation take place together, and we get to share this as a family. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 says this. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And then he says, and surely I am with you always to the end of the very age. We see that Jesus commands his apostles or the disciples to go and baptize and teach them. Go and make disciples. The word baptism is the Greek word, if you want to take notes, it's G911. It's the word baptizo, which simply means to plunge, to dip, or immerse. And if you grew up in a church, you know all about the fake baptisms in the swimming pool during summer, right? You're with your siblings, and you grab your little sister, your little brother, you say, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And you bring them up from the water. And if you were an only child, you had your little Spider-Man toy. He says, Spider-Man, do you believe that Jesus is Lord? And Spider-Man just there like, he's stuck. He's, he's just a toy that you, you would baptize your toys. What we were doing is we were imitating this beautiful sacrament of baptism. And you'll see here at the front that if you're a little bit closer, you'll have a better angle of it, that we have this tank filled with water, that we want to fully submerge those who are being baptized because this is what we see in the scripture. In John chapter 3, 22, verse 23, it says, after this, Jesus and his disciples went out into the Judean countryside where he spent some time with them and he baptized. Now John was also baptizing at Anon near Salem because there was plenty of water. Say plenty of water. And people were coming and being baptized. So we see this word baptizo. And you can also say the word baptisma or baptismo. That's like the Latin translation. And then there's also the Greek. And we see in this example and in other examples in the Bible that there is always a full immersion in the water to pour the baptism. The reason why you might see sprinkling of baptism is actually it wasn't created as a means like, let's find a new way to baptize, there was actually a problem that was going on. In the Middle Ages, every town had a small church, and in that small church, they'd have a, a small place to baptize, and this is over in Europe, and what happened is revival broke out, and hundreds of people wanted to be baptized at the same time. But when your church goes from 10 people to 700 people attending a service, you're going to need a way to baptize everyone. Because who knows that if you have 700 people going into a tiny tub of water, you're going to create a new disease or something nasty. <laughs> and it would take all day and all night. There's no way that a single priest would be able to handle what was going on. So they decided we're going to sprinkle as a form of baptism so that they can do a whole crowd. So... If if I was to try to baptize this whole crowd today and I had a water gun, it would be a lot easier than going one at a time. We'd be here all day. We believe that the scripture shows us that baptism is always a full immersion and that's why we will be doing immersion as we baptize today. So why get baptized? The first reason is we see in the Bible that Jesus was baptized. In Matthew chapter 3 verse 13 through 17 it says this. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me, Jesus? Jesus replied, and he said, let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he came up out of the water, and at that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And today, as we are getting baptized, we are following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ as we go into this immersion. Now, first, first service, I said immersion. And Pastor Chris is like, oh, that's the black version of baptism. You got the immersion instead of the immersion. We are following in his footsteps as we do the immersion. 
or the oh immersion, depending on the context, right? The second reason that we baptize is what we already read, that Jesus commands his leaders, his apostles, to go out and to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're commanded to be baptized, and we are following that commandment. So what does baptism symbolize? Baptism symbolizes our death, we go down, our burial, and our resurrection with Jesus Christ. Listen to what Romans chapter 6, verse 3 says about this death, burial, and resurrection. Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Jesus Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. So here, the Apostle Paul, he's not mentioning water but he's using water baptism as an analogy to show us the same way that when we go under the water, come up and come out of the water as in that baptism into his death, that Jesus, when we accept him, when we are saved, that it's a form of baptism, that his death, burial, and resurrection are something that we get to live by. Listen to verse 5. It says, for if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. And what I love about it is that none of us in this room have to be physically crucified, right? Jesus did that for us. He did all the work, and we get to reap all the benefits when we accept him as our Lord and our Savior. Who can be baptized? We believe that anyone who can articulate their faith in Jesus Christ is eligible to be baptized. And this generally takes place around the middle school age, around sixth grade. Now, is there an exact age, like at midnight on your birthday when you turn 10, you're like, I can articulate my faith in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior? Not quite. It's more around that age, we generally see that that's when students can really articulate what they mean when they place their faith in Jesus, and that's when we go ahead and baptize. We take this symbolic act of baptism. So what exactly does baptism do if it's symbolic? So first of all, I want to say what baptism does not do. Baptism is not what saves us. It is Jesus Christ who saves us. I'm going to say that again. It is not baptism that saves us. It is Jesus Christ who saves us. If you are water baptized but have no faith in Jesus, then it's not going to do it. It's a nice little, like, little shower bath thing. And it's some nice warm water. Might as well go swimming, right? It is faith in God and faith in what God says that saves us. The analogy that if you've ever taken Pastor John Mark's um, class on baptism, he says that a wedding ring does not make you married. It is a symbol of a covenant that you made with your spouse. So because I made this covenant with another person, now I'm wearing this ring as a symbol of that which already took place. We are getting baptized as a symbol of the salvation that we have through Jesus Christ. Every person that steps into the water, steps into that water knowing that their eternity is already sealed by Jesus Christ. What I also love about baptism is that in the Bible, that baptism also is a symbol of the entrance into the church. Listen to Acts chapter 2, verse 41. It says that all those who accepted Peter's message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. So all those who were accepting this message of Jesus by faith and accepted the the message that Peter preached, that they were baptized into the church that day. So baptism does not save us, but symbolically, it's an announcement of the entrance of the church. We're currently in a series at our church on the book of Exodus, and lucky for us, one of the two analogies used in the Old Testament of baptism is actually found in the book of Exodus. The other one is the flood of Noah, but we're going to focus on Exodus today. And it's a story in the Bible where God is setting his people free from slavery, from the Egyptians. And we see that the waters are parted, that God's people cross on dry land, and then we get into the idea of baptism. 
In Exodus chapter 14, verse 26, the Bible says this. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and their horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak, the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. Watch verse 28. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and the horsemen. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea, not one of them survived. Let's make this personal today. There's nothing in your past that can undo the freedom that Jesus Christ has won for you. There's no sins that can chase you down and bring you back into the bondage of sin. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. You see, what this army represents today is the past, is the old identity. And we see that the Apostle Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So as we're going into this baptism, symbolically, we're seeing that as you go down and you rise up, you're a different person in Christ. That when you accept Jesus and you go down, that your sins are buried that your sins are drowned in the sea, all the chariots and the horsemen and the thing that you struggled with, they're all drowned and you are alive, a new creation, free in Jesus Christ. We see that it doesn't just stop there, but that when you look at the story of Moses and you look at the story of Jesus, that they are very similar. We see that both Jesus and Moses were born in a time where kings were trying to kill the babies. We see the Pharaoh is the king of Egypt, and we see King Herod. When I was practicing, I accidentally said King Farid. So I'm going to stick with it. We see that Farid was trying to kill the babies as both of them were born. We see that both Moses and Jesus were born to set their people free from captivity. Both Moses and Jesus were great prophets. We see that Moses parts the sea and that Jesus calms a storm. We see that Moses receives the Ten Commandments on a mountaintop, and bring, Jesus brings clarity to them with the Sermon on the Mount. I say all that to say this today, that there is nothing in your past that can chase you down and destroy the work that Jesus has already finished. Jesus didn't say, it's almost finished. He said, it is finished or it is done. So what's our role here today? We talked about how baptism is a visible sign. And if you're getting baptized today, can you wave real quick? It's a symbol of a work that was already finished. Now let me ask you something. When you go to a graduation ceremony and your child is walking across the stage, what do you do? There you go. First service was like, we cheer. I've been to graduations. You're like, that's my baby. Ah! Right? Because you're proud of something that happened in your family. Well, guess what? Your family is, we should be very, very proud today and celebrate. So today we are simply celebrating together with our family. So when everyone is baptized, I want us to cheer real loud and celebrate with those who are taking the step of faith. Romans chapter 12 says to rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who reap. Today we get to rejoice. Let's go ahead and pray as we transition into our offering time today. Father, we come to you today in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you for over 30 people that are taking their next step of faith through baptism, Lord. I thank you that we have an opportunity as a family to celebrate the lives that are being changed. And I thank you for these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for watching today's message. My name is Pastor John Mark. And if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. We want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. 
The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is to take your next step in your journey. We'd love to help you do that. And you can head over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started today.